Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about bubble shot, probably the easiest shotting algorithm on planet Earth. So we will talk about how bubble shot works and we will see the implementation and finally we will talk about runtime and space complexity of bubble shot. So let's first talk about how bubble shot works. So suppose you have an array of n elements and you want to sort it. Now you can sort it in ascending order or descending order. So in bubble shot, if you are sorting in ascending order, uh, we swap the left element with the right element if the left element is greater than the right element. And just opposite to that, if you are sorting in descending order, we swap the left element with the right element if the left element is less than the right element. Now to better understand this, let's see an example. So here we have eight elements in an array and we're gonna sort it. Now we're gonna compare six and five. And since six is greater than five, we're gonna swap six and five. Now we're gonna compare six and three. Now six is greater than three, we're gonna swap again. Next, we're gonna compare six and one. Uh, since six is greater than one, we're gonna swap again. Then we're gonna compare six and eight. There is no swap required. Now we're gonna compare eight and seven. We need to swap eight and seven. Then we're gonna compare eight and two. We need to swap eight and two. And finally, we will compare eight and four. And we will need to swap eight and four. So after first iteration, the highest element in the array bubbles up at the top. Now in the second iteration, we're gonna compare five and three. We need to swap five and three. Next, we're gonna compare five and one. We need to swap five and one. Next, we're gonna compare five and six. Since five is less than six, we don't need to swap. Next, we're gonna compare six and seven, no need for swap. Next, we're gonna compare seven and two, we need to swap. Next, we're gonna compare seven and four, we need to swap. So after second iteration, second highest element in the array bubbles up. So in the third iteration, we're gonna compare three and one, we need to swap. Next, we're gonna compare three and five, no need for swap. Five and six, no need for swap. Six and two, we need to swap. Then we're gonna compare six and four, we need to swap. So after third iteration, the third highest element in the array bubbles up. Now in the fourth iteration, we're gonna compare one and three. Then three and five, no need for swap. Five and two, we need to swap. Then we're gonna compare five and four, we need to swap. So after fourth iteration, the fourth highest element in the array bubbles up. Now in the fifth iteration, we're gonna compare one and three. No need for swap, three and two, we need to swap. Then we're gonna compare three and four, no need for swap. Then in the sixth iteration, one and two, two and three, no need for swap, then in the seventh iteration. So this is how our array is sorted after n minus one comparisons, iterations. So let's see the implementation here. So this is the implementation for bubble sort. So here we have implemented a bubble sort function which takes an array and returns the sorted array. So there are two important things in this implementation. There is this outer loop which runs n minus one times and inside this outer loop, we have an inner loop, which basically compares element. And if array J, which is the left element, is greater than the right element, array J plus one, basically we swap the elements. So if you have an array here, which have eight elements, the outer loop will run seven times, which is N minus one. And inside the inner loop, we will compare the elements and after each iteration, the number of comparison will decrease by one. So in first iteration, there will be seven comparisons. In this uh, next iteration, there will be six comparisons. Then in the next uh, iteration, there will be five comparisons. So after every iteration, the number of comparisons will decrease by one. So let's run this code and let's see if it works. So here we got our sorted array, 1, 2, 3, 7, 10, 23, and 54. So this works. Now let me put a breakpoint here and then we're gonna run it uh, with debugger. So let's run it in debugger. So that we can see the 
value of array and variables i and j. So here i is uh, array is the initial array and n is 7. So let's move i is 0, j is 0. We're gonna compare. Then j is 1, we're gonna compare again. So we need to swap. So you can see that 54 is swapped. So again, moving forward, j is 2. Then again, swap. Then j is 3, no need for swap. So basically, you can see in the debugger the value of i and j and how the elements are swapped if required and after first iteration you can see that 54 is bubbled up at the last position now i's value will increment to 1 and j again will start from 0 so in this way we can see after every iteration uh, the value of i and j and the value of array so if we move forward with all the iterations and comparisons, we can see that 23 bubbles up, 10 is bubbled up, 7 is bubbled up, and 3 is bubbled up. So next highest elements keep bubble up uh, at the last positions. So after all the iterations, our array becomes sorted. So here if you see our array is sorted completely. So this is how bubble sort works. Now this is a not very optimized way of using bubble sort because it might happen that after one or two iterations your array is sorted or maybe after a five or six iteration uh, your array is sorted but in every case it will do n minus one iteration and in every iteration it will compare the elements so to make it optimized we have another version of bubble chart where we basically use a boolean to check whether our array is sorted so here everything remains the same the logic remains the same here we added a boolean variable called swap so in each iteration we are basically uh, checking whether after every iteration, we are basically checking whether there was any swap happened in that iteration or not. So if array is sorted after say two iterations, uh, in third iteration, there will be no swap. So in that case, swap will be false and this condition will be true. And we will break out after uh, from the this loop. So we will break out in the third iteration. So we don't have to go till n minus one iteration. So this is the optimized way of using bubble sort. So let's run this. So let's see if it works. So here we get the sorted array. So this was the input. And then we call our bubble sort uh, function, which returns the sorted array. So we have another class where we basically run our algorithm with a different uh, input array. So here we are calling the sort, uh, bubble sort optimized uh, function with three inputs. And let's see if our test passes. So let's run that. So you can see all these three test cases passed. So we are comparing basically what uh, bubble sort optimized uh, function returns and the expected value. And it should be the equal to expected value. And if it's equal, our test passes, otherwise test fails. So if I say change here the order of uh, these elements, it should fail, the third case should fail. So if I now run this, it should fail the third case. So you will see that third test failed. So this is how we will implement the bubble chart. Now let's talk about complexity. 
So in an interview, uh, Google's former CEO, Eric Schmidt, asked this question to Obama uh, that what would be the most efficient way to sort a million 32-bit integers? And Obama says that uh, bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. And that's right, because bubble sort is not the most efficient algorithm because the number of comparisons uh, is done in the bubble sort. So let's talk about the worst case for bubble sort algorithm. So the worst case for our algorithm will be when the input to the algorithm is reverse sorted. So if the input is uh, reverse sorted, so if input is this and we are sorting in ascending order, in first iteration there will be nine comparisons and in each comparison there will be a swap of elements. So after first iteration, 10 will be sorted. After second iteration, eight comparisons will be done and eight swaps will happen. So nine will be sorted. So similarly, in every iteration, uh, swaps will happen and one element gets sorted. So after nine iteration, we will be able to sort this input array of 10 integers. So if you uh, sum all the comparisons, total number of comparisons, uh, it will be order of n square. So that's why the worst case complexity for bubble sort is of order of n square. So big of n square. Now talking about best case. Now the best case will happen when the input array is already sorted. So in this case, suppose our input is already sorted. So this input is already sorted. So for with the first iteration, uh, we will uh, in the first iteration we will do nine comparisons but there will be no swap because the left element will always be lower than the right element so after first iteration we will be able to figure out that the array is sorted and no further iteration over the input is required so best case complexity will be order of n so big o of n but if we were using our non-optimized bubble sort, so if you use our this bubble sort implementation, in this case, the best case uh, complexity will also be order of n square because we don't check whether the array is already sorted in every after every iteration. So if we implement the bubble sort in this way, the best case complexity will still be order of n square. So talking about average case, so suppose our input is this, uh, we have 10 elements. Now there are factorial and permutations possible for this input. So if we run our algorithm against all of these input, possible inputs uh, and sum the number of comparisons, the average number of comparisons will be order of n square. So the average case complexity will be of order of n square. So this is about average case complexity. Now let's talk about space complexity. Now in our bubble sort implementation, we are only using the input array and two, in, uh, two variables i and j and one variable for uh, doing the swapping. So regardless of the input size, whether we are sorting 10 elements or 100 elements or 1000 elements, we will only be using this temp variable for swapping, no other data structure. So the space uh, used by this algorithm will remain constant and it doesn't depend on the input size. So it will be a constant and constant uh, complexity uh, and it will be a big O of one. So space complexity for uh, bubble sort is big O of one with this implementation. Uh, and one more thing, if you are doing a sort in descending order, all we have to do is change uh, this condition. So if array j is less than array j plus 1, so this will give us uh, a sort in reverse order. So let's run this and by this way, our elements will be sorted in reverse order. So but just by checking, uh, changing this condition. So this is all about bubble sort. In the next one, we will talk about selection sort.